good morning and on behalf of St John's Scottish Episcopal Church in Perth on this eighth Sunday of Pentecost the warmest of welcomes to you wherever you are. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Romans chapter 8 verses 26 to 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Is it Christ Jesus, who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 13 verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. Glory to Christ our Saviour. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hid in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, 
where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. I was speaking to a friend on the phone recently. He was in hospital waiting to be hitched up to a machine. He was in good spirits and he told me a story about a church service he had attended on the internet. Edwin is a Liverpudlian and although he lives many miles away from Liverpool, he decided to find a mass in Lancashire during lockdown. The parish priest provided a good service, but at the end, to recognise the recent historic victory of the Reds in the Premier League, he diverged a bit from the usual service rubrics and played the Liverpool anthem, You'll Never Walk Alone. And then, not to underplay the dramatic effect for his virtual flock, he removed his vestments and was found to be wearing the red strip of his and his congregation's beloved team. Walking alone, loneliness, solitude and isolation have been significant features of our recent experience of the pandemic. The topic arose recently at an online Quaker meeting I attended but there was no chance to pursue it then. By the time I attended the next meeting, I had read our epistle today from Paul. Romans 8, 35-39 speaks powerfully to the condition of desolation, including loneliness. Who will separate us from the love of God? Will hardship or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. After I shared this text with Quaker friends, one member said that it spoke to her condition and she read a passage from Quaker Faith and Practice about the single life, written by Caroline E. Stephen in 1908. A due proportion of solitude is one of the most con important conditions of mental health. Therefore, if it be our lot to stand apart from those close natural ties by which life is for most people shaped and filled. Let us not be in haste to fill the gap. Let us not carelessly or rashly throw away the opportunity of entering into that deep and more continual acquaintance with the unseen and eternal things, which is the natural and great compensation for the loss of easier joys. The loneliness which we rightly dread is not the absence of human faces and voices. It is the absence of love. Our wisdom, therefore, must lie in learning not to shrink from anything that may be in store for us, but so to grasp the master key of life 
as to be able to turn everything to good and fruitful account. When Caroline Stevens spoke of the opportunity of entering into that deeper and more continual acquaintance with the unseen and eternal things, it is not simply a consolation for the loss of other human relationships. It is rather the opportunity to develop a powerful relationship with God through prayer, the scriptures and contemplation. It opens the gate to an inner path or the narrow road and the discovery of the ground of our own being, the soul, which can always respond to the promptings of the Spirit, because, as St. Augustine put it in his Confessions, You, God, were more inward to me than my most inward part, and higher than my highest. At the same time, this discovery of the kingdom of heaven within does not take us away from the world and human relationships. It allows us to create a different quality of relationship with God, the world, and our fellow human beings. We can come to see God in all, in mustard seeds and yeast, lovingly. Commentaries tell us that we learn from these parables that the coming of the kingdom does not happen with a grand spectacle but with almost invisible movements, together with an intimation of a hidden presence. And what does that presence feel like? When we hear or read certain scriptures, do they not sometimes arouse in us a sense of warmth in the heart? I am reminded of the disciples on the road to Emmaus saying, were not our hearts burning within us? while he was talking to us and opening the scriptures to us. Such experiences can make us open our eyes and make us see things and each other differently. Similarly, when our prayers falter, as Paul tells us, we may experience the Spirit moving in us with deep emotion breaking into our prayers, interceding for us with God. As we come out of the restrictions of recent months, we will naturally experience some anxiety, along with the relief for many of us of being able to walk abroad again and seeing our friends and loved ones. Can the opportunity to ground ourselves in God's presence in prayer help us to reorientate to our changed world? Perhaps like Matthew's scribes, we can sift our old and our new experiences under the guidance of the Holy Spirit to craft new precepts and words of encouragement for each other. My father, a staunch Anglican, once said that in pop song songs, you could hear sometimes the inklings of a hymn or a spiritual truth. So often their themes are the struggles of ordinary people. In the famous song of Rogers and Hammerstein, which we mostly know through Jerry and the Pacemakers, we can detect the loins of those who have experienced depression both personal and economic. For people of faith, as many in Liverpool were and are, we can discover that God will catch up with us, or we will find him around a corner in our outer and inner journeys. I'll not disturb you by attempting to sing, you'll never walk alone. But as we must now adapt to saying hymns rather than singing them after lockdown, I will recite the words. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of a storm, 
there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. Let us pray. We ask you, Lord, that we may be open to encountering your presence on the road and have the generosity of sharing your love with all those we meet. Amen. our God, the smallest seeds, the yeast that gives rise, and the hidden treasures of everyday life are a few of the markers of your bountiful love. Guide us to see the ordinary as miraculous in your creation, filling our souls beyond measures of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
O Lord our God, endow all who govern in every area of our world with wise and understanding minds, able to discern and choose good over evil for the health and welfare of all your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, ease the burdens and fears of illness, injury or despair for those who suffer, especially during this difficult time, and bring relief to those who can give them care and look after them. In the quiet, we join our hearts together to pray for those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, we hold closely in our hearts all who have travelled to the end of their human experience and now shine in your eternal radiance and peace. We pray especially for anyone whose years mind occur around this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, we pause in this moment to offer you our other heartfelt thanksgivings, our intercessions, our petitions and our thoughts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, bestow the gift of grace-filled respite for all who are called to lead us in your church, teaching us to pray, to worship and to work together, all according to your purpose. We pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church, for Mark our Primus. We pray for our Diocese of St Andrews, Dunkeld and Dunblane, praying for Bishop Ian and Canon Carey. We pray for Annie our Curate, Rob our Lay Reader and all who exercise ministry, both lay and ordained. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of mercy, as you are always for us, nothing can separate us from the enduring love of Christ but ourselves. Catch us in your all-abounding net and draw us from the troubled waters of this life into the eternal good of your heavenly kingdom. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our hope and our Saviour, and the Holy Spirit, our Advocate and Counsellor, who together with you are our one God, forever and forever. Who taught us to say when we meet together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding 
keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God, Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.